what are the things that anyone and everyone can do, should do to, to live longer, basically. How long you got? Uh, well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Um, I'd like to live to be, I'd like my final decade to be between 90 and 100. Oh, no, I meant uh, how long no, do you? No, yeah, I'm, yeah, just yeah. Kidding, I'm just and, kidding. And will we spend from now until you're 90 talking uh, about this? Well, there's a risk of that. So, so let's start with a couple of the things that you've already highlighted. So smoking, how much does smoking increase your risk of all cause mortality? Smoking is approximately a 40% increase in the risk of ACM. What does that translate to? And um, that means I'm, I'm shortening my life by 40%. No, it means at any point in time, there's a 40% great, greater risk that you're going to die relative to a non-smoker and Got a it. never smoker. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to distinguish. It doesn't mean your lifespan is going to be 40% less. It means at any point in time standing there, your risk of death is 40% higher. Um, and by the way, that'll catch up with you, right? At some point that, that catches up, um, high blood pressure. It's about a 20 to 25% increase in all cause mortality. Um, you take something really extreme like end-stage kidney disease. So these are patients that are on dialysis waiting for a, a, an organ. So now the question is like, how do you improve? So what are the things that improve those? So now here we do this by comparing low to high achievers and other metrics. So if you look at low muscle mass versus high muscle mass, what is the improvement? And it's pretty significant. It's about 3x. So if you compare low muscle mass people to high muscle mass people as they age, the low muscle mass people have about a 3x hazard ratio or a 200% increase in all-cause mortality. Now, if you look at the data more carefully, you realize that it's probably less the muscle mass fully doing that and it's more the high association with strength. And when you start to tease out strength, you can realize that strength could be probably 3.5x as a hazard ratio, meaning about 250% greater risk if you have low strength to high strength. And high strength is the ability to move loads at 80 to 90% so it's all of defined, one repetition. It's, it's all defined by given studies. So some the most common things that are used are actually, you know, they're used for the purposes of experiments that make it easy to do. And I don't even think they're the best metrics. So they're usually using like grip strength, um, leg extensions, and like wall sits, squats, things like that. Okay. So how long can you sit in a squatted position at 90 degrees without support would be a great demonstration of quad strength, a leg extension, um, you know, how much weight can you hold for how long relative to body weight, things like that. Um, you know, we, we have a whole strength program that we do with our patients. We have something called the SMA. So it's the strength metrics assessment. And we put them through 11 tests that um, are really difficult. You know, like a dead hang is one of them. Like how long can you dead hang your body weight, stuff like that. So we're trying to be more granular in that insight, but tie it back to these principles. If you look at cardiorespiratory fitness, it's even more profound. So um, if you look at people who are in the bottom 25% for their age and sex in terms of VO2 max, and you compare them to the people that are just at the 50th to 75th percentile, um, you're talking about a 2x difference, roughly, in, um, in, in, in the risk of ACM. If you compare the bottom 25% to the top 2.5%, so you're talking about, you know, bottom quarter to the elite for a given age, um, you're talking about 5x, wow. 400% difference in all-cause mortality. That's probably the single strongest association I've seen for any modifiable behavior. Incredible. So uh, when you say elite, these are uh, people that are running marathons at a pretty rapid clip? Not necessarily. It's just like what the VO2 max is for that. Like my VO2 max would be in the elite for my age group. So maybe we could talk a little bit about the specifics around the training to get into the, um, you know, top two tiers there, because it seems that those are enormous positive effects of cardiovascular exercise. Dead hang for about a minute seems like a, a really good goal for a lot of people at least to... that's our that's our goal i think we have a minute and a half is the goal for a 40 year old woman two minutes is the goal for a 40 year old man so we adjust them up and down based on uh age and gender great and then uh the wall sit what's what are some we numbers don't use that... a wall sit we do as, as just a straight squat air squat at 90 degrees um and i believe two minutes is the standard for both men and women at 40. and then um you mentioned deadlifting body weight 10 times i just made that one up we I... don't, that's not one that we include but but something I mean, uh, something like that um we use we use farmer carries so we'll say for a male you should be able to farmer carry your body weight for uh, i think we have two minutes right. so that's half your body weight in each hand um, you should be able to walk with that for, for two minutes. 
Um, for women, I think we're doing 75% of body weight or something like that, yeah. 